Welcome to Café with Cavaina. Today we have with us Runa Eng, President and CEO at Spectrum Geo. Welcome, Runa. Good afternoon. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here in Brazil again. Yeah. Is it the first time you are in Brazil? No, this is probably uh, ten times. Or ten so. times. Yeah. By Spectrum. Because you no. worked in other companies, other kinds of companies before, no? I worked with PGS, and PGS had operations in Brazil from the late 90s to early 2003-04. Oh, great. So th that time you moved to, 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 to Spectrum? That time uh, I was quite a lot in Rio, but then I moved to Spectrum in 2010. Okay. Yeah, great. Nine years. Working. Nine years. <laughs> great. Runa, um, in Brazil, we we have we had five bid rounds in this last two years. Uh, permanent offer of blocks now available. Very strong uh, situation. Transfer of rights bid to happen this year, at the, before the end of the year. Is a new phase for seismic acquisition in Brazil? You mean? Yes, I. I think so. If you look at the, um, first of all, this uh, the permanent offer I think is very important for attracting other oil companies than just the majors. We have seen the super majors in coming in uh, the bigger um, uh, areas like Santos and Campos and but usually quite high bonuses to pay to get the block. Mm -hmm. Now we're seeing with a permanent offering where you have open rounds that smaller companies can actually apply and, and also uh, then participate in, in, in perhaps blocks that are not that popular as, as the, uh, as the, the call it the golden blocks that's the always... Result ones. The pre salt ones are always very attractive. And so I think this is... Uh, this is very uh, positive for the permanent offering. And I also think it's uh, uh, positive now that we have some transparency on the new rounds coming in 2019 and we have in 2020 and we even looking at license rounds in 2021. So you can see, so you can see, and you can predict, and oil companies can then plan for their investments and participate. It's even the sectors are given of where they think that the license runs is going to be in 2020 and 21. So oil companies can plan much better. So I think the uh, the uh, the license runs is is obviously. <coughs> it's obviously very, very, very positive, and uh, and also the fact that uh, that the government seems to be much more open for, and I would say, probably more pragmatic in terms of uh, business, business, and be more open, and we can see how the government is trying to turn the economy from being a bit more restricted to try to open, open more, more, liberal. New, more liberal and open for new investments. So I think that's very, very positive. And for seismic point of view, so companies are coming to Brazil to make more spec surveys and, and contracts to, 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 let's see, to, to, to analyze our data and our opportunities to offer to the majors and, and no, in permanent offer for the not so big companies too? Yes, so uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's created. I I think from typically the pre-salt areas, you're probably looking at ten ten bigger oil companies that could yeah. participate. Now we have also seen that some of the national oil companies, like the Chinese mm -hmm. uh, CMOOC and CNPC, and also Petronas, are very interested in coming into Brazil. Uh, but uh, we are seeing now that the interest has come probably from 10 companies to probably more like uh, 15, 20 different oil companies that participate in, uh, in, uh, in the open rounds and, and, and try to get blocks. So diversity of companies are, are always uh, 
uh, important point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Runa, in this uh, same matter, I mean, uh, how, how do you compare Brazil opportunities with the uh, Gulf of Mexico, North Sea, uh, Africa, coast? Uh, is it possible to make a comparison? Yeah, I think so. The, the, uh, the, uh, I think the beauty of Brazil is that it's been partially underinvested. So, uh, also again, because the government wants to stimulate in more investments and have more open in openness in the economy. And part of that is that you know, you have what I call uh, uh, top-class sedimentary basins like the Santos Basin where I think first discovery was made in 1970 and it's 350,000 square kilometers. It's a huge basin. and But it's just in the recent, I would say, 10-15 years mm -hmm. Uh, where it's become very popular now and everyone wants to go into Santos, everyone to have a stake in Campos Basin and these are huge basins. I mean, the, I would say as strong that probably Santos is the probably the super basin of the world right now. Mm -hmm. And it's probably difficult, you can see how some of the bigger oil companies are pulling out of the more mature areas in the North Sea. Um, certainly also Gulf of Mexico where uh, I think the investment environment has turned probably a bit more negative than positive over the last 5-10 years. And therefore Brazil is, is an obvious target where you can make a, a billion barrel discovery. Uh, and at the same time have, uh, uh, call it, good investment climate to, um, to live with. So, as far as I can see, uh, and, and it's a huge coast, so you have everything from the Pelotus Basin all the way down to Uruguay and all the way up to French Guiana where you have the Fossa Amazonas. So you, you almost, it's almost like a microcontinent where you have all kinds of different sedimentary basins within the same yeah. country. So it's fascinating. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, and about Mexico, the, the Mexico side, uh, is that attractive too, I mean, uh, for seismic operations, seismic acquisition now? Uh, in the uh, Gulf of Mexico and Mexico side? Mexico side. Yes, I, th I think so. But again, that's uh, I, I always say when it comes to uh, investments, whether it's an oil company or a seismic company, is that you have two you have two kinds of risk. You have the subsurface, which is always about geology and geology. how big we can find discoveries. But then it's a bow ground risk. And that bow ground is usually related to politics. It's about the tax regime. It's about stability. And there you can see that probably Mexico has turned to the worse over the last five years because there has been a new election and we see a slightly trend to Less liberal going to... Pemex going back again holding up new license round. And this is in contrast to what they have done in Brazil, where we have actually encouraged to get more license round, more investment, and probably take away a bit of the monopoly of Petrobras. And we started that process in Mexico, but it looks like it looks it's like stopping up a little bit. Yeah? So you mentioned something very interesting, and, that, and uh, so Brazil is becoming a better place to work and to invest, specifically for seismic operations of, and, and for oil companies too. And which which variables you consider, if you can line for me two or three uh, variables, geology you mentioned, uh, regulation, uh, what else you have? Well, I think that comes back to uh, to. Uh, the, the global float of, uh, of investment power. So uh, that's, uh, that's one thing that is truly uh, global is, is, uh, is cash and investment power, whether it's uh, an oil company, is a seismic company or any company for that sake that seeks the best investment opportunities. And I think uh, in that sense, it seems that, uh, that uh, Brazil is actually now attracting much more investments than it has done 
in the previous decade. So I think you will see that over the next 10 years, you will have more investment in exploration and production uh, than you saw in the previous 10 years in, in Brazil, simply because the government is, is so, uh, they're trying to stimulate investments and try to decouple the monopoly from Petrobras. So I think the above ground risk in Brazil is coming <laughs> down. Why are we seeing other places that also try to have license run, like for example Argentina, mm -hmm. that may have some problems with economy and their it's currency? different from Mexico. Mexico is a kind of a decision, a state decision. Argentina more in terms of economy. Yes. Strongness, yeah. But also it always boils down to, I think, um, decisions from the administration. Yeah. So Argentina probably has a history where people are a bit uncertain about investing for the future. That's true. And Mexico, I just think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the, the new president has openly stated that he wants to empower Pemex more. So I even in that, call it um, competition for global investment, Brazil is actually now Competing in the first division. Good, excellent. Yeah. And uh, um, talking about a little bit about technologies, uh, uh, technologies are stable in seismic acquisition or are being transformed a lot? What's really happening in technologies for seismic? So um, it's um, probably changed a lot over the last uh, 10, 15 years ago because we have especially in Brazil and other areas where you have had exploration and drilling for a long time, is that you usually started with some, uh, call it early investigations like 2D seismic, airborne gravity, things like that. And then you start to zoom in on the most attractive areas and I do like 3D seismic. Then you make discoveries and you start production and then you do what you call the 4D seismic. And the 4D seismic is really repeating seismic over time to see the variations in the, in the reservoir, how the water is moving, so you can best place the new wells in, uh, in your drilling campaign. <clears throat> so I think the, uh, what we have seen is that the, call it the resolution of seismic, so you can see better. Uh, more details. More details. And you can also see, we have started with a new technology called uh, a seabed seismic, where you put nodes on the seabed. Mm -hmm. And the nodes on the seabed gives you a better coupling to, to the earth. So you actually get better signals and you can see even more. Now we're talking about the resolution in seismic of less than one meter. So that's very quite good. impressive. Consider the size of our reservoirs, and so it's very good. And also the fact that some of the reservoirs sits in 2,000 meter water depth, and then you may have uh, two kilometers of salt, and then uh, then down at uh, at uh, five six kilometers, you <laughs> have your actual reservoir. Wow, a challenge. So it takes a lot six kilometers down wow. to see one meter of resolution. That's pretty good. Very good. Yeah, yeah very good. Runa. Um, Rigs and uh, drilling operations are very concerned to uh, cybersecurity and things mm -hmm. related to that. Um, seismic uh, ha has the same situation for cybersecurity? I don't think that has the same because, uh, because uh, of course, we're, we're always concerned about our data security and everything, but in most cases, uh, the storage and how we deal with our seismic data is uh, is actually dealt with um, in 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 uh, in a relatively safe and efficient uh, uh, way. But of course, the uh, as we're starting, as I say, talking about uh, big data, where we're building up uh, like. Um, uh, we're talking about terabytes of data and we're talking about global databases. Then, especially if you start to store all your data in the cloud, then we may see a problem with, uh, with big data. So, 
I think uh, uh, big data and uh, and uh, security probably will be part of this development into what we call artificial intelligence, where you're using all your data to find trends. So when Exxon makes a discovery in Guyana, they want to take all the data that they have globally and see if I can find the same characteristics of the Guyana discovery in Africa or other places. And that's actually, uh, you know, a human uh, being will take to interpret a 3D seismic of, for example, uh, a typical block in Brazil, which could be like two, three thousand square kilometers. It probably takes that person five to six months to interpret as a human being. While if you do it in, in, uh, in, within a computer-based system, you probably do it within less than a day. It's yeah. totally different than that. It's very different. Yeah. Perfect. There's a, a matter very uh, interesting nowadays. We, you are seeing in newspapers uh, TGS and Spectrum joining forces. Can you explain us a little bit about this uh, merge and the future and the market and uh, clients? Yes, uh, so uh, Spectrum was listed on the stock exchange in 2008 <coughs> and it means that uh, we have built up uh, a, a very big multi-client database and it's, uh, it's of course like that when, uh, when you are in a competition with uh, like TGS and CGG and Western Geco and PGS and Halliburton, they all try to put uh, libraries together of seismic or well information. And uh, we have been very successful over the last six years, and particularly in, in, in South America, where I think TGS realized that uh, what they're missing in their global portfolio is that footprint that we have in South America and also in Africa. So very simple, TGS made a bid on, on the company. Uh, so um, we will see how that, that goes because it basically means that it's the shareholders that needs to vote and, and decide if, if this is going true. And that's probably going to happen in June uh, 2019, so in, in about one month. Mm -hmm. And then eventually it's up to the shareholders to decide whether this is a good deal or not for the shareholders. But it's uh, from an industrial point of view, mm -hmm. this is going to be the world's largest multi-client library. Oh, really? Yes. So um, uh, it is probably becoming uh, fairly dominant in terms of what we call you mentioned it, big data and, and uh, uh, the global footprint that enables any oil company to screen mm -hmm. if we're getting there on the artificial intelligence. Combining these two libraries, you have a very efficient tool to screen uh, new opportunities worldwide. These two companies are complementary companies in terms of business or they are competitive? <coughs> Uh, their business model is is uh, is very much the same in terms of uh, how we operate and how we deal with our clients, but it's uh, it's geographically uh, spectrum is uh, much more focused on on the southern part of the globe. So we're strong in in South Atlantic, uh, also in Mediterranean, also in East Africa and in Australia, while TGS is probably stronger in like U.S. Gulf of Mexico, North Sea, and Canada. So good because markets are being complemented. Well, Absolutely, very, very yep. good merge. Yep. And in terms of spec survey and, and non-spec, I mean uh, the regular contracts, these both companies do the same proportion of these two situations of contracts. Uh, so TGS is uh, is quite a lot uh, bigger than us, but in terms of if you look at the investment power, then uh, Spectrum probably is going to invest about 150 million dollars in uh, in um, 2019, while TGS is more likely going to invest 300 to 350. So together will be about half a billion, 
but TGS investment uh, is, is running at uh, twice the level as, as we are, so they are a bigger company. Oh, good. Mm. Uh, Runa, um, how will now a company choose a, a seismic provider uh, service? How they choose? What are the variables they consider to pick one? From an oil company point of view? Yeah. So I think uh, oil companies have probably also changed quite a lot over the last, uh, yeah, I would say uh, fr from the peak in the industry in 2013, where the global market for seismic was about nine, ten billion US dollars, and it's probably come down to about three or four. Uh, and this is because oil companies have reduced their um, call it replacement, uh, uh, reserve to replacement ratios gone down mm -hmm. and they're focused on, on just keeping the existing production going as good as possible. Okay. But, uh, but uh, so it has turned a little bit, I think, from uh, earlier in, in, in the cycle where it was a lot about technology and developing new technology, but then suddenly oil companies and also the service industry realizes that well if we don't get paid for it we're not going to develop it and that's where Schlumberger has taken a, a hit and said we're not going to develop new technology unless we get paid for it mm -hmm. and they have stopped uh, on, on seismic. Nice. Uh, CDG is still quite active on, on R&D and developing data processing uh, but I think it's probably in terms of when you do a selection, it's probably more on the price, of course, sure. uh, but also the reputation and the, uh, the HCC qualifications that you have safe operations that will always be an important factor. Environment is an is a issue, is an issue in Brazil, in part of your vision? Environment is always an issue uh, everywhere you operate, but in not that much only for seismic, but the whole, call it, uh, development uh, train or chain from, from early exploration to, to, uh, to production. Uh, so perhaps environment in Brazil has been a bit more pronounced than you have seen other places where you have regulatory uh, set rules. While in, in, in Brazil, it's, it's always uh, uh, from area to area, you need to do environmental assessment, you need, need to do beach monitoring, so almost like, because this is a huge coast, um, it's, it's almost like starting all over again if you move from one area to another area. Excellent. Well, very good, thank you very much. I appreciate this conversation. And uh, it's a pleasure to meet you here again in Brazil. Thank you. Thank you. I will come back. Good. Excellent. Okay. Good evening for everyone. Thank you. <laughs>